Tim, welcome to Watch Want, and thanks for logging on. Today we're looking at the Zenith El Primero Striking Tenth Limited Edition, one of 1,969 pieces made for the 2011 model year. This 42mm polished stainless steel Zenith can be purchased on our website, watchyouwant.com. And if you like these videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Watch You Want Inc. Now you can see on my wrist, six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference. While this does have a nostalgic look, it's very much a modern sports watch in absolute size. The proportions are classic, but the stance on the wrist says 21st century. I would say that from overhead, this 42 millimeter diameter watch has about the same wrist geography as a six digit reference super case, Rolex Submariner or GMT, or even something as large as a 42 millimeter Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore. Now there are a couple of features that make it exceptionally comfortable, and the first is the low profile. Although 14 millimeters thick, the watch has a cupped case back, so rounded, it nestles within the skin. It only sits about 12 millimeters above the skin, so you can easily slip this classically styled versatile watch under a tight sleeve or dress cuff. I always like that. Now the other factor in its favor is a fantastically supple, flexible, and beautifully finished bracelet. Zenith is a true manufacturer. They make their cases, they make their movements, they even make escapement parts, including the hairspring. Literally no one does that. You're talking the greatest manufacturers have accomplished that degree of complete component construction. But Zenith extends that to the bracelets and the clasps. And this one is a beautiful piece with a progressive taper that reminds me distinctly of the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak. Now, not so much in the degree of hand finishing, the Royal Oak certainly costs more for a reason, but in the tolerances and the precision of the individual steps as the bracelet tapers beautifully. They're so smooth here that I can only feel the downward progressive sweep of the inward taper. I can barely feel the incremental steps down through the bracelet. That's really impressive, and Zenith gives you a lot of value for your money. This is a lot more watch than you're paying for, a very honest pricing, and that's that's refreshing from a major manufacturer in Swiss watchmaking today. Now, beautifully finished it is, although not as hand finished as an AP Royal Oak. You do see that the bracelet has a distinctive polished flank. The outer links are polished, and then the inner, or rather, the outer links are brushed on their hoods, polished on their flanks, and then polished on the center links. The bracelet itself is completely screw fixed, so you can see the incremental adjustment factor here for correct sizing and precise fit is extraordinary. Not just completely screwed in links, but completely screwed in and individually removable on each side. Very impressive. That's more value still. And as Zenith does build its clasps and finishes them as well, you get a fantastic piece. Now double deployant, that allows you to avoid that single large swing that can sometimes gouge a smaller wrist when trying to fit a single deployant on a smaller wrist. The smaller steps of the double deployant make it easier to fit this watch on a smaller wrist like mine. You know I like that. Twin trigger for a very positive closure and security. You can hear when it closes, very crisp. And when it's closed, very low in profile, almost seamless. This is anything but a bulky dive clasp, although very strong and very secure. And even though this is not priced like high horology, it's certainly engineered and finished like it. Zenith always offers more than the price point suggests, and you can see that inside, the swing arms, the buckle, the undersides of the clasp, completely finished, no raw, unfinished, stamped cut or machined edges. This is a lot of value for the money, and that's long been Zenith's hallmark. But the standout feature of this watch is the watch itself, the case, the dial, and of course the El Primero movement. This example, the 2011 model year limited edition of 1,969, is so numbered for a reason. It's literally a time machine time warp back to 1969. Now the model that it is paying tribute to is the famed a386, part of a series of three initial launch models for the original El Primero movement. The El Primero was the first high beat, automatic winding, integrated chronograph movement. And of the three movements that raced to be the first automatic chronograph movement, the Zenith was by far the most advanced as well as the most enduring of the original Breitling, Hamilton, Hoyer, Chronomatic, Caliber 11, the El Primero, and the Seiko Caliber 6139. Only the El Primero remains a frontline high horology contender and a standard of reference for the industry today. Heck, only the El Primero remains in production, and it's an extraordinary piece here in caliber 
4052 form. Some new tricks up its sleeve. I'll get to that in a moment. I want to talk about the dial. Now, the tricolor registers, these are iconic of the original A386. And if you're a Zenith guy, you're going to recognize this immediately. This dial is loomed, so it is sports watch style loomed. It is 100 meter water resistant. That's the advantage over a vintage watch. The details are time tested, but the proportions and the durability are very contemporary. And that's a nice tandem. All applied, diamond polished indices, diamond polished hands, very legible. I do want to mention that because this is a striking tenth, the way you're going to read the individual sub-register times is just a little different. Before I go any further, let's watch the striking tenth hand blaze around this sunburst metallic dial. And there you go. I promised you some new tricks. The Zenith delivers. What you're looking at is one of the great innovations in El Primero development of the last five years. The striking tenth takes the fundamental unique calling card of the El Primero, the 10 beats per second, a resolution equaled by few chronographs, and it makes those individual beats more useful for timing fractions of a second. When you're trying to look at a single second calibration on a dial and discern how many tenths of a second it ticked when you stopped it, it's going to be a lost cause, even if the watch is calibrated. I was in the Navy I aced flight screening. The bottom line is even I can barely tell. So what the striking tenth does is it expands the individual second. So the hand makes one circuit of the dial every 10 seconds, the result being that those 10 individual beats are spread out over the space that would normally be occupied by six seconds on the dial. So you can quite easily recognize how many tenths of a second you timed. So you have Granted, no hours register on this watch, but you do have the ability to get up to 60 minutes. You have increments of seconds and then increments of tenths of seconds. That's incredible resolution. Quite frankly, I don't know too many guys who time things over an hour on chronographs anyway, so if you're going to time something short, you may as well get precise resolution. And if you've got a spectacular movement in a watch, why not show it off in spectacular fashion? Now, I do want to make one cautionary advisory to the next owner of this watch. There are two versions of the striking tenth movement out there. There's the 4052, which is in here, and then there's the 4057B, which is both a striking tenth and a flyback. I've done a review video on that movement as well in a Stratos limited edition. Don't mistake the two. If you try to reset this in flyback fashion, you're going to crash the chronograph and cause a lot of damage. Stop it and then reset it. It's easy to do and it's fun. Anytime you get to interact with a movement this precise and beautifully crafted, more is better. Now you can see, in all its glory, the famed El Primero, 36,000 vibrations per hour. Since 1969, it's been blazing away and blazing a trail. Not just setting the standard for the chronograph, but in a lot of ways, it was part of the foundation of the comeback of the mechanical watch in the 1980s. In 1985, production resumed after a hiatus of 10 years. As the luxury mechanical watch business came back to life, Rolex commissioned Zenith to be the exclusive movement provider for the first generation of automatic chronograph Daytona from 1988 to 2000. So the pedigree and the endorsements that this movement has acquired over the years, peerless, unrivaled. When Rolex admits it can't do any better, that's one heck of an accolade. But flags fly forever. Still, Zenith continues to innovate. You can see part of the, the mechanism of the striking tenth. Continuous motion on the striking tenth wheel right here under my finger. You can see its unique greenish purple tone. The rest is classic El Primero. The innovations continue here, but the standard of finish isn't so much a work in progress as a distinctive tradition that's quite a bit offbeat compared to what most Swiss watch manufacturers do. Most will either oxidize a screw blue or polish it, and most will apply perlage to a base plate and then Cote de Genève to bridges. Zenith has two standards for screw finish. There is the adjusting screw, and this is actually part of their engineering mindset, the watchmaker's watchmaker. There are the blue screws that are used for adjusting the mechanism, so they're blue oxidized, heat fired in a kiln, and then there are the polished screws. Polished screws are used for assembly. They only hold things together. The blued screws are used to make adjustments to the base movement itself as well as the chronograph functions. Now you can also see that there's quite a bit, let's see if I can get some of the chronograph bridge right here, 
there's quite a bit of perlage on the movement on the bridges, and this is unusual. That sort of overlapping engine turned pattern is usually seen on base plates. Zenith prefers to use it on bridges. I actually like it because it looks different and it has a little bit more visual nuance to it. It's a little bit more exciting to see than Cote de Genève, which can be a bit, a bit sterile. Now, the El Primero, though it is automatic, here alleviated a bit by the skeletonized rotor, remains one of the best and most open, most visually intriguing chronograph movements. Some, like the La Magna 5100 and the Valjoux 7750, just don't excite visually. With the Zenith, you can see the layers of the works. It's more interesting to see under a loop or with the naked eye. 52-hour power reserve, crisp column wheel actuation of the striking 10th chronograph. You can feel it, you can hear it. It has outstanding endurance, winding efficiency, it's double tough, very refined, and very precise with resolution that you can now see in broad sweeps of the striking 10th hand. This is an outstanding evolution of a great design, aesthetically as well as mechanically. It's going to be a memorable addition in the canonical list of great Zenith watches, especially those powered by the El Primero movement. And you can see this Zenith El Primero striking 10th limited edition 42 millimeters in stainless steel on our website, watchyouwant.com.